Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different than the usual stuff. So if you guys follow me, you guys know that uh, my channel is going to be all about cast iron. But lately I've been getting into smoking, uh, using smokers, things of that nature. So um, I've only used offset smokers. I don't know much about Traegers. I don't know much about um, anything else besides offset. So these videos are going to be mostly about uh, offset smoking. Uh, and using, uh, you know, some some hardwood, uh, things of that nature. And I'm not, as I mentioned, don't know much about pellet uh, grills. But with all that said, let's get started with the first part of the video, which is actually a chicken. So what I did was spatchcock the chicken and I did take the thighs off. Uh, the other thing is that I removed the skin off the breast just because I want more of that flavor into the the meat and not so much stuck on the um, on the skin obviously you can you know press all the seasoning into the, under the skin but i just opted not to do that let's look here what we have here we have the uh, chicken breast the um, chicken thighs neck and gizzards and then some roasted potatoes so everything's looking pretty good. I'm gonna close it back up and let it continue going. So, all right, guys. So potatoes are about done. I think actually they are done. And then we have the chicken thighs and then the chicken breast going. So almost there. We're about two hours in now, guys. Probably another 40 minutes. All right, guys. So quick side note. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I am new at this, so. One of the things that I have noticed is that potatoes possibly not the best thing to smoke. Uh, so far, I didn't like the flavor profile left uh, in the potatoes from the smoke. So that is just one thing that I want to put out there. I don't know if you guys want to do that, but my recommendation is don't smoke your potatoes. I think it's better if you just put them in the oven or a Dutch oven and roast them in that manner. But um, as I mentioned, everything turned out great. The chicken was very juicy and flavorful. The carrots were great as well, and uh, everybody enjoyed it. All right, guys, so the second part of the video is barbecued pork ribs. And I smoked barbecue ribs already, I want to say maybe three times, and I kind of have that a little bit dialed in. So I did this for Mother's Day. I did show a shorts video of this on YouTube. But um, I wanted to show you guys also the results of this. As you can see, this one does take about four to five hours to do. And as I mentioned, um, you get beautiful smoke rings on the, bar on the pork ribs. And it turns out wonderful. That's one of the things that I love the best on, on with, you know, making ribs. Uh, they turned out really great, uh, especially when you smoke them. I've done them before, you know, with uh, in the oven. I've done them before with uh, just a normal grill. But um, smoking them just gives them that, that awesome flavor. So I do recommend you guys give that a go. And as I mentioned, you know, we went all out for Mother's Day with, with everything. All right, guys. So the third and last part of this video is going to be the beef ribs. And one thing that I did learn was uh, your fire management. It is very important. Uh, I do recommend that you trim down your pieces of wood. Uh, it gives you better control of your fire. But anyway, so as you can see here, I'm also trimming the brisket, when I, something that I do recommend that you do. Uh, I do like using the gospel all-purpose uh, meat church seasoning, but I had very little of it. So I decided to opt with the thundering longhorn beef rub, which uh, this is the first time that I use it. And uh, everybody actually liked it. So we're gonna, you know, place it on, let it sit for about 30 minutes or close to one hour, and then we'll throw them on the grill. All right guys, as you can see, we have these here and I've let them rest for about 30 minutes. We're gonna get them ready onto the smoker. All right, guys, and as you can see, we have some thin smoke coming out. 
we're doing pretty good. As I mentioned, this is my char griller. And we have it actually pretty hot right now. It says we're at 450, but I have it very indirect. So I'm hoping that the temperature comes down just a little bit. It is kind of hot. I did place a water um, tray right there also to catch any kind of drippings. All right guys, so we are maintaining temperature. We have a little bit of wood in there. We don't have a lot. It's not like this, uh, you know, offset smoker is full. Uh, we only have a little bit of hickory wood and then we're maintaining in the 300 range. Everything is set to this side away from the actual, you know, um, firebox. So we have it here with, as I mentioned, a uh, aluminum catch stripping pan with water in it. Uh, to allow for some moisture as well and we also have the rack of ribs up here and I'm all uh, you know I'm, I'm keeping temps here with my probe uh, this is the ribs and this is my um, uh, brisket so the brisket is a lot bigger than the ribs obviously um, we're looking for a 170 target temp so once I reach uh, target temps for either one I'm gonna take it off and wrap it and then let it go until we reach the 210 or 205 temperatures that we're looking for. So anyway, guys, uh, stick around. And as I mentioned, we're gonna keep going. So far, we've got about an hour in there. And uh, yeah. All right, guys. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I am a novice and I am still learning. But one of the mistakes that I made was thinking that I could have this ready within the four hour mark. Um, with this larger brisket, it did take longer. The ribs were smaller because obviously there isn't that much meat. It's more bone than anything else. Um, but anyway, so with the brisket, I figured I could do this in at least minimum five hours, but that wasn't the case. So if you cook by temperature, and I do recommend that you cook by temperature and not time, make sure that uh, you go up to 170, 180, uh, and then you you know, you know get a, you develop that good bark. And then after that, you can wrap it. Um, and then wrapping it go up to at least 200, 205, 210, depending on what you're cooking. But those are the temperatures you want. And the reason being is that the, the tenderness, once you reach those temperatures, uh, is amazing. Believe me, there is a huge difference. If you don't do that, you might have a, a brisket that is really tough um, or all the juices just spill out. So those are just some of the tips that I've picked up so far. And as I mentioned, I am a novice, but I hope you guys enjoyed this you know, video. I know it is a little bit different, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And as always, I appreciate your time. Thank you guys for watching.